those of you that don't know Rob uh, is just an all-around good guy, uh, does a great job educating and both trading in the market. Rob, if you want to go ahead and start your screen sharing, start your desktop sharing, you can go ahead and do that. But uh, something that we started doing a while back at um, a few trading pub events has been the trivia. And so, uh, you know, one thing we like like to see, I know you guys always like making money. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a trivia question real quick before Rob gets started. And here's the rules of trivia. Number one, the first person to type in the correct answer wins. And then rule number two is you can't complain if you are too slow. All right. So everybody understands the rules. So again, the first person to type in the correct answer wins. And what we'll do, if you happen to win trivia, shoot us an email. I'll call out the winner. Uh, but shoot us an email at support at tradingpub.com. You can send us your PayPal. Okay, gang, let's just going to be a $50 trivia question. Real quick. Can everybody All right. Go ahead so again, a $50 trivia okay. question. Okay, here's the deal. Here's the trivia question. I know Rob's probably working on getting his desktop sharing going, so we're going to okay, give you guys a super. chance to Great. Well, good morning, uh, good morning everybody. Rob so just a quick reminder here. Um, All right, the if, trivia question I apologize is, if how many trading this, championships just a quick reminder, has Rob since, you know, won? We're looking at, uh, how many trading championships trading has Rob won? This morning. Um, it, you know, Futures, All right, looks like we got the answer is five. Let's see the first person perhaps, to type it in um, was. You know, all involve uh, huge risk. Scrolling back up, yeah, we're quick. So just you know, take a moment. Morgan's probably already Let's gone see. ahead and gone through that with you earlier, but the winner just want to take a moment to remind everybody Randy about that as we uh, get into the Randy morning session here. Okay. Um, so, and always consult your registered financial advisor and risk trading plan. Right, congratulations, so Randy. So what you, we're going to uh, do win, is if you um, email us, support at tradingpub.com. Charts here. We'll get you taken care of. Uh, take a look at these. Uh, you guys should see, see Rob's screen up there. Now, Morgan, uh, we've got I don't a know, ton guess, of people in the room approaching really a thousand people this. to watch. Uh, is it okay to be doing live trading? Rich is Greg supposed to be teaching today. And uh, Rob um, looks like. Uh, <laughs> Rob, yeah, looks like you already been making a little bit of money today in crude oil. Okay so, to do both. Uh, uh, Rob, okay. at this time, I'll turn it over to you. And so I, I heard yours. the presenter do a little teaching, so I'm like, oh, I hope this wasn't just teaching. <laughs> so um, great. Well, good morning, gang. So let's go ahead and take a look at these markets and see where some opportunities might go and exist. All the news is out for this morning uh, at this point. And uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, take a look and see if we have opportunities um, to go ahead and um, you know, get some uh, live trades off here and maybe give you a better feel for you know, how I'm looking at my analysis and um, uh, you know, uh, teach you guys some great things along the way here this morning, hopefully. So uh, was, uh, as uh, Morgan mentioned, uh, already working with crude oil here uh, a little bit earlier. But let's see what the other markets are going ahead and offering up at this point. So uh, as we're looking at the euro, you know, the euro uh, was kind of a one-hit wonder back here a few days ago. Uh, I was looking to see if, uh, as we were building up steam around this dollar thirty-three fifty area, if once we pierce through the dollar thirty-four, we could go ahead and continue on. But at this point, uh, we're not doing that. I was like, I was looking to see if we could get a repeat of this back here, where we built up that uh, pressure between the dollar thirty-three and the dollar thirty-four area, and then looking for this to go ahead and uh, you know push to the upside uh, you know this actually went up to as high as dollar 37 can't see it but you know, there you go um, so the um, it, you know, what happened here we've failed to go ahead and break out of there uh, we just got a one day push and then it came right back off so the plan for this one at this point uh, given that we've already come off these lows this morning, it's it's pretty hard to go ahead and take the short back down as it settles down into an area we know that there was some buying that stepped into this. So um, at the same time, I really don't want to look for a fresh long just yet uh, because we have uh, the resistance coming down on top of us over here with the speed line. So the um, uh, I think for today we're going to go ahead and continue to um, a little step aside. The, the big prize for me, from my perspective, will be either if we fail this whole region uh, right here, this key support here of a dollar thirty-three. There we have some great opportunities for some short side trades down below. Uh, through and to the channel points. Uh, otherwise, if we get back above the dollar thirty-four, we're more likely to go ahead and make that higher push. So for today, uh, the purpose is I think we're going to go and keep an eye on some of the more other the other ones that are a little bit more active. Um, 
as far as crude oil, now crude oil, I said, has already been active this morning. Of course, we had the weekly inventory report uh, yesterday. And um, so with today's session here, uh, the next step that I'm kind of looking for is going to be either a breakdown below these lows, which is also kind of a midpoint support level, which is dollar, uh, sorry, 103.50. And if we can get down below that 103.50, I'll certainly be looking for um, short side opportunities. Otherwise, what we're looking at here is to the long side now. Uh, if we get back above the speed lines, there might be an opportunity here on the daily basis, basically get above this 104.60 area, 104.65. We may have a short-term opportunity depending on how the charts look. There's a, little, a lot of resistance on the hourly basis, and this is something that a lot of traders um, struggle with. Um, you know, I, I'm going through that even, you know, whenever I get uh, new students into our uh, student family in the live trading room, what ends up happening is inevitably people tend to focus on the one minute charts, the two minute charts, maybe the five minute charts, if I'm really lucky, the 15 minute charts, but very seldom do the traders focus on the hourly and daily if they're intraday traders as well. Um, so what happens, um, and what we're looking at, um, uh, we're going ahead and basically uh, seeing if uh, we can then push through this hourly chart back up and effectively start to turn this frown upside down, if you will, uh, on this hourly chart and see if we can start to uh, roll back up. So right now, first things first, we've got a lot of resistance in here. we got a big fat distribution bar, um, and hopefully many of you have seen some of my training uh, that I've, I've given you guys in various events, such as uh, uh, Morgan's events here, um, like the distribution accumulation bar breakouts. So if you have, then you know just how important these areas are going to be uh, right now to uh, this morning's trading for additional trade opportunities. Okay, If not, I'll try to uh, share a couple of different uh, details for you. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything with natural gas. Um, so, the uh, uh, Robin, I will not be trading the natural gas report. Uh, you know, I know some small lot traders that uh, you know do trade that because it has wild moves. Of course, the problem is, you know, it has it can have a wild move in your direction. It can certainly have a wild move against you, uh, and it can easily move 50 to 100 ticks plus on that report. That's going to go ahead and uh, come out here in just a f about four minutes. So, no, I, I tend to go ahead and actually stay away from that one. Okay. Uh, no, I don't, uh, Joe, trade the uh, lumber. Primarily, gang, uh, just to give you an idea of what we'll be looking at today, <clears throat> excuse me, from a um, uh, market perspective, I look at the currencies, uh, both on the uh, uh, future side and the Forex side there. Um, in fact, uh, you know, went ahead and actually placed second in the international competition for Forex back this past May. Um, so the, uh, you know, the, the Forex is also an opportunity. Um, the, uh, the pound yen is actually one of my more favorite pairs there because of the volatility and the movement. Uh, but um, what we're going to be primarily focusing on this morning is going to be the uh, futures currencies, um, or currencies uh, futures, if you will, and uh, crude oil, gold, stock index futures. Uh, and then we'll also uh, perhaps look at soybeans, although soybeans right now, <clears throat> excuse me, gang, let me get a, a sip of water here real quick. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the um, uh, it, we'll also be looking at the uh, bond. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work our way down there. So as far as the um, gold is concerned, let's go ahead and take a look at that. The uh, gold, we're looking to see if we can get back above this 1380 level. We're making uh, some good progress there. I'm happy to see, for those of you that have been following like my nightly videos and that, you know that uh, gold is very much on my mind. Uh, we go ahead and we push up here. And uh, we look for, you know, we've gotten a pullback. We tested that 1380 level. We went about 40 ticks above it and then came back down to the uh, rising support levels here, as you can see the speed lines. And now we uh, opened at those speed lines, traded below them, got right back above them today. So we're kind of making a run for that uh, 1380 level again. If we get above that 1380 again, we're likely to be moving towards 1400. And as you can see, the hourly chart is already looking a little bit better uh, than we went ahead and saw on some of the, uh, you know, one of the other charts the, uh, we were just looking at uh, a moment ago. So this is a much better place to be. Of course, the ideal place to be is with that hourly chart actually, you know, from left to right going ahead and being up. That's the best place to be. But at least here we've gone ahead and we're starting to turn that, uh, you know, old frown into, you know, a little bit of a smiley face, if you will. So that's going to go ahead and be something we're looking at here. 
All right. So as we go ahead and we look at the uh, so thir uh, the 1380 level we'll be uh, focusing on here. As we go ahead and take a look at the stock index futures, um, you know, in my regular live trade room this morning, uh, before I came over to this event, um, this is exactly what we were going ahead and uh, focusing on, looking for long side uh, trade movement here uh, back. And let me just uh, show you a little bit why. Uh, so what we did was we've held on to some long-term support right here. And uh, it's, it's very key uh, to this uh, whole process. You know, back here, of course, for those of you that watch our nightly videos, we talked to you about why we were expecting a, uh, a downdraft in the uh, market there. And the reason being, uh, we had a lot of anecdotal evidence. Uh, I had a trader that came to me um, who went ahead and took a big hit back in 2008, 2009 uh, in his portfolio and went ahead and came back to me now that the Dow has gone up 9,000 points and said, hey, you know what, I'd like to get back into uh, the markets here. Um, you know, how can I get started and everything? That to me was kind of an alarming sign. So if you guys go back and watch my videos, um, you know, I talk about that. And we also uh, went in and talked about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the positive, or sorry, the negative uh, divergence that was taking place at the time as well. So the, um, uh, you know, so what's happened is we have pushed down. Now we're at a very key, uh, you know, bastion of support, if you will. Uh, if we start breaking down below this area here, which is currently right now around the 1638 area, that could bode very poorly for the market as a whole. Okay. Um, and uh, so CJ says the site's not working to register. Uh, CJ, I'm not sure if you're referring to my site. Um, if it is, by all means, let me know, and, and we'll see if we can take a look at that. Um, but the um, – uh, so as we go ahead and we take what you do here, uh, CJ, just real quickly, if I may, just go to the front page of the website right over um, here where there's this little uh, box in the middle, and uh, there you can get access to the free nightly videos. Okay, um, and uh, so that's maybe that'll help you. Okay, so. As we go ahead and we look uh, back here at the S&P, so what we talked about in the room uh, before I came over this morning was uh, the importance of needing to go ahead and hold this level. Breaking down now below today's lows uh, would bode very poorly uh, for the stock index futures because we have a lot of opportunity to grow to the downside if we don't hold this key support. So I'm sure I'm not the only one going ahead and seeing that. If we take a look, so this is the S&P. You can see we've got at least another good 30, uh, 38 to 40 tick or points, excuse me, uh, to the downside before we hit the next major support on the S&Ps. As we go ahead and we take a look at the um, uh, Russell here, you'll notice that if we start going in and getting uh, back down below uh, the previous low set for a few days ago, we've got initial support around the 997 area, but then the next major one comes up um, uh, here at the 971 area. So we certainly got um, you know a lot of opportunity here to the downside if the, if the markets start going and rolling over. So these next couple of days are going to prove very important. In the meantime, basically looking for short-term trades uh, in between these key uh, support and resistance levels. And that's, that's about all we can do. As a swing trader, I'm not really excited about going ahead and putting on fresh uh, naked positions uh, in the middle of this right now until such time as we either break back out. Um, and you'll see here the Russell, we're nearing up near this uh, key resistance right up over here. Uh, at the same time, if we break down below the support, uh, then bad things can happen very quickly. So same thing here with the NASDAQ. If we look at the NASDAQ, um, the NASDAQ here, uh, we've got multiple bars of distribution right here. One, uh, two, and then uh, three. There's three good solid ones in there. So you see we're just now on the top end of that. Um, and we tested those levels yesterday, and the market ended up going ahead and rolling back sharply. So the um, what we're looking for now is to see if after all that failure the last several of days, if now we can break out above this level. So the key area that's very important in the NASDAQ right now is this 3100 level. Okay. Does everybody see that? Can you see these distribution bars um, that are in here? For all of you that are familiar with what my distribution bars are, you have three of them in there. And so as you draw the, uh, the, the support level or the bottom of it to the top of it, that area becomes one big uh, fat distribution area. So the top end of that's right here. 
But if we break above that, that could prove to go ahead and be uh, fairly bullish uh, for this. So we're, in the meantime, until we get those breakouts at this point, we're just going ahead and uh, treading very lightly, focusing now on intraday positions. Uh, if we can start breaking uh, back above here, though, we can start looking at things uh, such as uh, you know, selling puts, uh, doing uh, bull put spreads, different things like that, where then we're going to feel breathe a little bit easier that the market's likely to continue at least up or staying sideways rather than going ahead and rolling back down. So a very important piece here um, as we're looking at these uh, multiple instruments. Now, the one that uh, has got to be the most concerning and for all of you that are going ahead and doing um, like correlation charting, uh, I do correlation charts on an intraday basis. In fact, here's uh, that chart on an intraday basis. And you'll see um, uh, what we do then is, so I got uh, crude oil here, then I got the other stock index futures over here. So I like to see how they're trading on an intraday basis against each other. That's very important because when I tend to see one that's out of whack from the others, bad things tend to usually happen. Okay? Um, and um, so as we go ahead and uh, look at this now on a bigger picture, you'll notice that what we have to do here for the Dow is basically get back above this area right here. This is a, a massive downtrending resistance area. Now, just like the other markets, if we can get above this uh, 14,970 level, then we have actually, as you can see, a lot of room to grow. Does everybody see that there? So from here up to here, we've got a lot of room to grow, just as we went ahead and had over here on the NASDAQ. And let's just pull that back up. So on the NASDAQ, if we can go and break this uh, distribution band right here, which we're very close to, 3,100. So you see that's where we're kind of stalling out right now. Okay. If we can break above that band, then there's a lot of opportunity to the upside over here as well. So that's one of the reasons um, about an hour and 15 minutes or so ago I was bullish on the uh, stock index futures uh, given kind of this uh, uh, pattern that's going and taking place there. Okay. Um, Chris B asks, what is out of whack? What, is, what does that mean, Chris? Uh, what is out of whack? Um, the Let's see, Dow, yeah, the Dow, the Dow is basically the laggard. Uh, the Dow is uh, the strong uh, laggard here. It was the first one to really, it was the weakest on the way down. The NASDAQ was actually the one, Chris, uh, that went ahead, or it looks like both Chris's, Chris B, Chris D. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the Dow is the one that's out of whack. It went ahead and was the weakest on the way down. The NASDAQ was still you know, way up here, basically, as the Dow was starting to roll over. Then it started getting caught by my speed lines on the way down, and that's just a really bad place to be because now it's a ton of bricks coming down on top of you. Um, and as I've proven and demonstrated, you know, if you're on the wrong side of those speed lines, bad things can go ahead and happen real fast. You're looking to trade with those. So when the, when the uh, Dow went ahead and got below these levels, um, that was uh, that that just posed a lot of uh, problems for the rest of the market. And the problem is that a lot of people say, well, the Dow's going to, and this is what people were saying to me at the time, the Dow's going to come back up. The Dow's going to come back up. Why? Because it was one instrument, okay, versus um, uh, uh, the other three instruments. And so the assumption uh, by a lot of traders is if there's one out of whack, whichever one is out of whack will go ahead, you know, out of correlation, will get back into sync with the other three. And that's actually uh, not really true um, more than 50% of the time. More than half the time, you'll actually see the other three come to meet the one. Okay, so keep that in mind. And Jesse is asking about FOMC, um, and I'm not sure what about FOMC, Jesse, that I, I can uh, help with there. Uh, TJ, hey, by the way, TJ, good to see you again as always. Um, the uh, yes, the the economy is uh, certainly out of whack. We could talk about that all day long. But if you think about this for a moment, gang, if you've been following like uh, my free nightly videos, uh, you know, for a long time, if you've been following what we've been talking about for you know, a very long time in these markets. Just think about this conceptually for a moment. So what happens is, let's just co pull this to a, a weekly chart here and pull up some extra data. Uh, so here we are. The market goes ahead and uh, the futures get down there to, you know, below the 7,000 mark, right? We actually got down to around 6,500 in this market, okay? So the, the futures get down here where it's 6,500. Now, for the next few years, I think it's fair to say we didn't hardly hear a good thing 
back in um, – uh, we didn't hear hardly a good thing about the market, did we? Uh, not a good thing about the economy, jobs, real estate, people losing their homes on the street, uh, you know, those, those big mean banks going ahead and foreclosing on people. That's all we really heard about you know, um, for quite some time, isn't it? And yet here we are through all that process for a couple of years where we heard nothing but negative news. Okay, um, now all of a sudden here we are to all new all-time highs, and now I've got you know a person like a week a week and a half ago, whatever it was now when I I um, put the email out for you guys. Um, I can tell you when is right back. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Okay, so we go to the front page of the website, uh, go over here to BBT Free Videos, scroll down here. Um, there we go. Um, it, was the, it was the night of the 5th for the 6th, live trading and don't miss Rob's warning tonight. So it was right there, uh, right before the market went ahead and rolled over. Um, you could see it was right here. So August 5th. Going, this, you know, these videos are dated for the next day that they're uh, out for. Um, so, you know, Miss Roswell, it's a very, it's a very interesting video if you watch that video, um, and uh, you know, you kind of see why we were looking for a top there at that point. But like I said, one of those is those psychological um, factors of now. You know, what happened at Dow 7,500? What happened at Dow 8,500? Dow 9,500? Where were people at Dow 10,000, 11,000, 12,000? Now we go ahead and we get to Dow 15,500, and people want to go ahead and step back into the market. Does that make sense? So yeah, it's, a, it's a really great guide, and you know, I, I've been showing throughout this year uh, in a pretty cool way, um, showing what the news media has been going ahead and saying. And what was very interesting is earlier this year, earlier this year, what was happening was that people were going ahead. There in the the local in the, or the national news media, you were hearing a lot of bearish stories. This market's due for a crash. The market uh, is due for a crash. The market's due for a crash. Does that make sense? And then all of a sudden here, what I pointed out too around the same time is that suddenly the news media started actually making fun of some of the people who said the market's due for a crash. And so I said, and I cited in the videos, that's another bearish sign because um, they were making fun of, they were saying like, okay, here's the 15th warning, um, you know, uh, about the market coming down, right? And the different things like that and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. It's great stuff if you just uh, read about that. So with that being said, though, where we're at with this market now, so the, the Dow is very weak. We're sitting here right at these, um, you know, uh, key levels uh, pushing down, and um, the uh, so what we're looking for now in the Dow to support the overall market to continue to rise um, and retrace, I really I should say. And I have a technique called the speed line to 20 period moving average trade. That's this right here, looking for a move back to um, the 20 period moving average. So I'd like to see us get above the speed lines and start pushing back up there. Um, and that would so that's going to lead to a lot of uh, short term trading on an intraday basis to the long side if we can get that, if that makes sense, okay? So as we go ahead, we look down the list right now. So the, the Dow is a little bit of an issue. Um, it's still the laggard even today, while the other ones are sitting there right at their breakout points. Uh, you can see we're at 30.9950. We're right at that key level that I've been telling you about here this morning. And um, we're right here at this level, and so I'm looking to see if we can continue. Now, we've already had a lot of rocket fuel on the session, right? We've already gone ahead and uh, gone from all the way down here at the key rising support all the way back up here to test. So what I would prefer to have happen at this point to go ahead and uh, uh, take this trade down is have this roll back a little bit. So hit this key level, which is doing right now, pull back, take a little breath, build up a little bit of rocket fuel, and then look for a retracement back to the upside. Does that make sense, gang? So in other words, hit this level, take a breather, pull back a little bit, and then start to charge through this. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? You understand what everybody, I'm saying? So, because what happens is, we, we tend to, as traders, do what? 
we watch the market go ahead and go up and go up and go up, right? And so what ends up happening is finally we just go ahead and capitulate, and then it's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just jump into this trade. Well, the thing is that if we don't let it pull back first, catch its breath, where is the energy to propel us through this area and actually make us a big profit? Okay, because the exception to the rule is that it's just going to keep on going with this big green bar and just keep going and keep going without pausing and breathing. Does that make sense to everybody? That's right. Yeah, buy high, uh, sell low, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a pullback. I, like I said, I've been very bullish since we walked in the door this morning. Um, uh, for those of you that are in my live trading room, you heard, you know, about an hour and a half ago, you know, we gave the morning briefing before the market opened, um, you know, and uh, so I'm definitely looking for fresh long side trade opportunities here. What I'd like to do is get a pullback first to support catch a breath and and uh, pull back. Now, let, let's talk about that for a minute. For those of you that are a s small lot trader, how many of you have small lot trades or small lot accounts and small accounts? Maybe that you trade, forget, maybe you have lots of money in your account, but you only trade one or two contracts. How, how many of you does that kind of describe? Typically, you only do one or two S&Ps, one or two crude oil, one or two gold, uh, one or two euro contracts, stuff like that. Okay, so, okay, great. Uh, clearly lots of you. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, so with that being said then, let me ask you a question. What makes more sense? All right, you've already gone ahead and gone up a great deal on the day. Now, it's only one or two times a month typically that the market's just going to go and go and keep going and keep going. Does that make sense? It's only one or two times a month where something like that's going to happen. That typically you're going to have to ebb, flow, ebb, flow, ebb, flow. So the um, uh, what makes more sense then in this case? Buy the breakout, buy the high, and even if you're right, you have to sit through a pullback that puts a lot of heat under you. Okay, it puts a lot of heat on you, and you have to wait for that support underneath of you to come up. Okay. So you got to sit through all the heat, all the heat, all the heat. Then it's got to go back up your way, back up your way, back up your way. And then by that time, you've been sitting here so long hoping for it to come back up, you just go ahead and grab a tick or two. Does that make more sense? Or does it make more sense to go ahead and wait for the pullback first so that then what you can do is put a more defined risk underneath there, like the speed lines, for instance. So you wait till it pulls back. And then goes ahead. And you're looking for it to, you know, catch its breath and then take back off, like it did here earlier this morning. Or does it make more sense to buy this? So if you think about this, this is a 15-minute bar. You buy the high of that. A lot of us do, don't we? Okay. A lot of us go ahead and um, uh, buy the highs here. Okay. And so the um, hey Donna, those are just short-term custom um, uh, indicators of mine. So uh, that's all they are. And uh, but if you want to use like a uh, you know a five and a seven or a four and a six period moving average or something like that to kind of at least have something that tracks the market kind of closely, that's something that you can go ahead and um, uh, do there. Okay. So the um, uh, or if you want to be closer to price, maybe a three and a five period. So you know if you, it depends how close close you want to be to price, but basically just use like a short term moving average sequence uh, to try to mimic that. And um, so basically. Uh, what we're looking for here is you see how we go ahead, the market opens, right? And then a lot of us uh, pile into it. How many of you have ever gone ahead and seen a big move at the U.S. Open only to go ahead and have it, um, you jump in right at the U.S. Open because it spikes real sharply up or down, and then all of a sudden you get caught in a nasty reversal. How many of you has that ever happened to Chances are, if you've been trading for more than a week or two, <laughs> um, you know, it's probably gone ahead and happened to you if you trade the U.S. Open, right? So, 
the um, the reality is for the, those of you, that's why a lot of people, um, and typically even myself, I typically don't trade the first 15 minutes of the U.S. session uh, because of those whips on. It's only usually once or twice a day, um, or excuse me, once or twice a month that the market just opens up and just blindly goes and goes and goes. So what happens is we go ahead and we get into that first, you know, several minute rush of the day. We jump in there long because we see this big long bar. And we're thinking about all the money that we're missing on this bar, right? So we pile into the trade, and then all of a sudden it starts pulling back. And now all of a sudden we're down quite a bit, right? Does that make sense? So my argument is if you're a small lot trader, would it go ahead and make more sense to actually look for the pullback and wait for the pullback? So now if you, you can have a more measured stop, like for instance, you're expecting at that point for it to put, bounce off of this rising support. If it doesn't, then you can go ahead and look at having a stop down below that rising support. So now instead of your risk being from here down to here, it's actually from here down to here. And yet your reward opportunity, if it continues up, goes ahead and becomes much more relative. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody see that in action right now? You know what, Ray? I'm actually going to do a class on that. Ray says, what's your trigger on the pullback? Um, here's, if you guys want to go ahead and do this, um, I know that um, Morgan was kind enough to post the, you know, my uh, website address in. It's becomeabettertrader.com, becomeabettertrader.com. If you go to the front page of the website there, if you just put your email address in, uh, your name and email address right there, um, I'm actually doing a class on Monday uh, to help you guys. Okay, Morgan, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Um, and so the um, if you, you sign up right there, everybody, we're, we're putting that out today, and I think it's like 1 o'clock Eastern or 2 o'clock Eastern today, the invitation for people to join that. So we're going to actually go through that um, uh, with you. Um, so that will be a great training class uh, because I, I've got approximately, I don't know, the 30 or 40 minutes here left, and uh, I'm actually going to do a couple hour class for you guys on Monday. So if you want to go ahead and be part of that, just go to the becomebettertrader.com just and put your name and email address in, you'll get that information. Okay? So that'll help you with that so we can kind of stay focused on the rest of this message uh, for the moment. But what we're looking at then is, uh, so in summary, we're trying to, I'm trying to get people to focus on waiting for that pullback and thinking about what happens with the heat because what if you think about this, these are 15 minute bars so now you jump into this trade you get the top tick it rolls over you're down for 15 minutes you're down for half an hour now finally an hour, you know 45 minutes plus later it goes ahead and finally comes back up your way and you're just so grateful that you're even making a profit you jump right back out okay so that's the risk that we're going ahead and um, waiting for. As far as the uh, strength of the, the uh, move there, um, let's see, Omnovia doing its thing, losing sound. Can you guys hear me okay? Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Sounds good here. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, so... Um, Going back to the question I think that was asked by Harry, if I, if I believe uh, correctly. So a couple things to go ahead and help gauge the uh, the, the strength of a trend um, to, to start here is like the, the 20 period exponential moving average, keeping it real simple, something that all of you should have, Harry, on your um, uh, you know, uh, the platform, right? Any charting platform should have a 20 period exponential moving average. If it doesn't, please contact me and I'll help you get one that does. So I'm sure yours does. So with that being said, um, you know, looking for that nice 45 degree angle uh, on the 20 period moving average, where I don't find trends to be very sustainable um, is when we're sideways. Well, and Aaron, I'm not sure why you're having a problem with uh, the chart. Uh, what we have here is a two-minute, a five-minute, a 15-minute, 60-minute, and daily. Okay, so it's basically the same information. So what happens is some, sometimes when people first see this, they get very overwhelmed by it. Okay, 
But then what ends up happening is after uh, you know uh, several days, now they can't live without it because they realize the importance of the multi-time frame analysis, which is something that I teach. I cannot go and emphasize enough, um, not looking at the hourly and the daily charts uh, can be very hazardous to your financial health. Um, and uh, so I, I see so many people take trades off of tick charts or one-minute charts or two-minute charts or five-minute charts with absolutely no deference towards the um, uh, hourly and the daily chart support and resistance levels. And so they buy what appears to be a perfectly awesome trade, um, you know, right here on the five-minute chart, and yet they're not thinking about the resistance that's right in the backdrop here. So they buy into this position, and then it rolls back over. Does that make sense, gang? That's right, Elaine. Multi-time frame charts are very powerful, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big believer in that, gang. Okay. Uh, how many lots should we trade as a day trader? Well, that's a that's a great question, David. There's a couple of different issues that go in there. And first of all, I do have to remind you. I mean, because trading involves risk, not just reward. Uh, you have to think about those risks and what that means to you uh, in your risk trading plan. So I would encourage you to consult a registered financial representative or even just your broker. If you have a good broker, your broker should be willing to talk with you about it. They clearly know how much money you have in your account, and um, so you should go ahead and be able. To to uh, you know, talk with your broker about your individual situation. But typically, what I like to see, like you know, from from my perspective, and like in my live trading room, what I encourage people to do, the cycle is this. That's why I try to do like three month memberships um, is what I offer for people in the room, and and then all these great video courses and stuff like that that go with it. Because what I want them to do is the first couple weeks, I want them to put down the mouse, pick up the pen. Does that make sense? So I want to pick out, put down the mouse, pick up the pen, and start taking a lot of notes. Then I'd like to see them transition over to a simulator. Okay? Then I want you to prove the concept with the simulator. And then I want you to be able to go ahead and go over and start doing it with one contract. Now, once you've gone ahead and started doing it with one contract, okay, then what ends up happening is then once you've proved the concept with live money with a one contract account, then as your account and your risk management allows, go ahead and you can go to two contracts. Now, it's very important then that you prove the concept once again with two con uh, contracts. And then you keep going up uh, as you, uh, and then once you've proved that concept for you know several weeks or several months with two contracts, go to three contracts as you know your risk plan allows. The reason being, is because I have literally seen, I was actually sitting next to a gentleman, it, it was actually in Chicago, Illinois, uh, it was back about four or five years ago, and I was invited to speak um, as a guest speaker in an event, and so I, it was not my turn to be up, and so I was sitting with him like in the back uh, of the room there, and uh, you know, kind of uh, sitting there with him and, and watching what he was doing, and with one contract, he was perfectly great. With two contracts, he was perfectly great, right? And then all of a sudden with three contracts, he went ahead, and, and I, I kid you not, gang, he went like basically pale. He, he, he went pale. Uh, he could hardly talk. And I'm like, dude, breathe. <laughs> True story. And, I mean, so what happened was he had, you know, he, he was getting to that point where he was taking on too much risk at that point. Well, that le that level is different for everybody. Me, I'm a big lot trader, okay? Um, you know, I'm a big boy in this business, okay? And so the uh, I'm trading huge size. Well, the, um, uh, you know, at times. And then... Uh, Whereas you know a, a one lot trader, it's going to be a, it's going to be different, and so we have to work through that cycle. You know, my my honest belief is down the road, eventually, if you're going to make real money in this, you have to be able to trade you know some more contracts. We're not looking to go ahead, and um, you know, I think it's a misnomer that people you know make really good livings uh, with one or two contracts. That's my honest belief. Um, so the um, you know ultimately uh, the goal is to try to build yourself up where you could do you know uh, bigger trading in, in my opinion. So I hope that goes ahead and helps. Um, as far as simulator, um, so 
the um, uh, simulator here, you want to be careful with the simulator. The, the, the thing about it is don't fall in love with your simulator because, remember, in the end, you're not really risking real cash. You, you, it's, it's a double-edged sword with the simulator. If you make money on it, it's like, oh, man, look at all that money I would have made. If you lose money, then it's like, ah, it's not real money anyways. Who cares? Does that make sense? And so you got to be real careful. You really got to treat a simulator like it's a real win, a real loss, um, and particularly the loss side. You got to feel that pain. You got to bottle it up like a genie and feel that pain. Like, wow, that's not good. Okay, so I got to go back to the drawing board. What did I do not do right, or what did I underestimate? What did I miss? Um, so that would be a comment that I would have about the simulator. Uh, you, you know, you want you want to go ahead and prove a concept. In simulator, but there's no there's no substitution for live trading. Uh, all the all the international competitions, I get invited to competitions all the time. They're not real money, so I only go ahead and trade competitions that are real money. Um, you know, every single one of the competitions that you see on my website uh, that we, you know, that uh, uh, Morgan actually did a little uh, fun, um, you know, guess the number of championships Rob's one thing. Every one of these, whether it was these uh, Trader Expo competitions, whether it was the eight trader competition uh, over here, whether it was the 16 trader international competition in Paris, France. Uh, whether it was the Forex event that I did uh, back in May, every single one is live trading only. Anybody can be a hero on a uh, simulator. Okay, so I hope that helps. Okay, all right. So getting back to this concept here uh, that we were talking about, uh, what do we see as we're we're going ahead and looking at the uh, Nasdaq futures here? Where are we struggling, gang? And where are we sitting at right now? As I've been talking to you, what level are we sitting at there? Well, you know, Joe, that is kind of, you know, uh, a reality. I mean, a lot of traders talk about trading or trade on a simulator and things like that. Um, yeah, I do put it out there live. Win, lose, or draw, I put it out there live for people in the live trading room to go ahead and see. And that's, you know, um, I'm very proud of that. So, yeah, that's true. Um, I do do it live. So, the, um, uh, but right now, look at the level that we're stuck at right here. Um, the uh, we're stuck at that 3100 level. Isn't that the level that I've been warning you guys about the last whatever 15, 20 minutes as being that key resistance? So you see, and how did I determine that resistance? See, if you looked at the five minute chart, the five minute chart looks gorgeous. Does that make sense? The five minute chart here looks fantastic, doesn't it? You can't get a whole lot better looking five minute chart. You just can't. But the problem is, that we're at key daily resistance, okay? Um, yeah, uh, uh, sim means simulated trading means fake money, fake trading. You're not actually putting it live. Like for instance, you know, I, I did this trade on crude oil here, uh, made $770 before taxes, uh, exchange fees, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, and uh, that's live money. For anybody that's got the Infinity Trading Platform, uh, you know the gray backdrop here is live, and it was, if it were fake, it would say uh, sim, uh, uh, simulator, sim, something like that. I know it's a, it's a baby blue background, okay? So, you know, I, you know we don't do you know, play money, uh, not me. Um, so you'll, you, you just won't see me use the blue background uh, for a live trading event. So the um, uh, but the the time frames the time frames here are the two minute chart on the far left, or right excuse me two minute five minute fifteen minute hourly and daily. Most of my intraday executions are off the two minute and the five minute chart unless it's more of a built-up position. If I'm building a large position, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, going to reference the 15-minute chart. Okay? Uh, uh, Shay, uh, the same, these are the same charts. What you're looking at right now, gang, is the same exact charts that I use to win domestic and international trading competitions. This is it. You are looking at the exact same setup. When I traded my Forex, you're looking at this, the same setup. When I traded the uh, futures, um, you're looking at the same setup. When I go ahead and I look at options plays, I'm still looking basically at the same setup. The only difference with the options is I put the weekly chart on there as well.
Um, so the uh, that's the difference with the options. And we also for our, our nightly swing trading video, um, you know, we're gonna, we use the weekly chart as well. So, but for intraday trading, so like basically primarily the live trading uh, room activities, and that these are the charts for my trading competitions. These are the charts. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you're, if you're lousy on a simulator, you're probably lousy in real life as well. Arturo, X, absolutely, and good morning to you. That's why I went ahead and was saying prove the concept first on a simulator if you treat it real. Because if you can't make money on a simulator it, without the fear of loss, you're probably not going to be able to do it with you know a real contract. So that's why I was saying those stages of evolution. Um, you know, uh, you know, going through that process of you know, watching my videos that you get as part of your membership, come into the live trade room, just listen to me, put down the mouse, pick up the pen, um, you know, learn all the different things, then go to a simulator to try the, some of the concepts yourself, then go ahead and move to real money as your trading plan allows. So, exactly. All right. And, um, yeah, thanks, Jesse. I don't know if you're referring to my free videos or you're referring to my actual video courses, but I'd like to think that they're both awesome, you know, um, <laughs> uh, pretty awesome, uh, to be quite honest. The, um, but the, uh, and, and speaking of the videos, real quickly, while I just have a moment. So what you can do, again, for all of you that want to be part of this training class I'm going to be doing on Monday, uh, it's, it's free to you guys, um, but you guys can go ahead and sign up right here. Uh, become a better trader. Uh, if you're interested in my nightly videos, uh, the premium day trading and swing trading one, you can read all about it right at this little link. We just actually are in the middle of a special offer there. Um, so just let you guys know about that real quick. That's about all I'm going to say about it. I'll let you read about it yourself, but it's an incredible offer uh, to join our nightly day trading and swing trading video newsletters and get a whole bunch of great stuff, including a swing trading course um, and a fear of pulling the trigger hand during the drawdown course um, and, uh, and also even a free set of my a starter package of indicators so pretty awesome thing for only 97 bucks so pretty cool so if you guys are interested in that but the um, is far but I'd like to think that the video those videos that come with that uh, and also the nightly videos are pretty darn awesome so the um, well thanks Joe very nice of you um, let's see Oh, Yatish, would you do me a favor? Because I don't want, I don't want, I want to keep the education flowing here with Morgan's events. Morgan's an awesome guy. I really love the guy to death. Um, and I don't want this to turn into some big um, sales presentation. Um, you know, I try, you know, tr what I really try to do is try to offer a lot of value at whatever presentations that I do. Um, you're hearing from a real trader that goes out and does it live with real money, real competitions. Um, and so, if you do me a favor, just email support at becomeabettertrader.com. Support at becomeabettertrader.com. We can go ahead and talk about that uh, offline, okay? Um, and uh, Morgan, I hope it's, you don't mind, <laughs> but uh, there's a question about things. So what I said was the sign-up page, the front page of the website, becomeabettertrader.com, okay? And then right down here where we've got this little um, box here, that's where the special offer is. This, this box up here was from my friend Morgan's event today. Um, this box down here is for the uh, special offer. Okay, so um, so getting back to this, um, so what I want you guys to understand, one of the hopefully I've just proven the concept here in just this short amount of time, um, and the um, uh, what I want you to understand is. I, if nothing else, one of the key takeaways is understanding what's happening with the hourly chart and what's happening with the daily chart. For instance, what's happening in general with the hourly chart here on the NASDAQ from left to right, if we go ahead and we draw in the channels here, it's still, um, you know, it's it's struggling. It's going ahead and pushing up. Well, so we have to be careful. We've used up a lot of rocket fuel. We're hitting distribution in the backdrop. And so now we're getting that pullback. So do you want to be that person jumping into that trade and now you sat there um, through this pullback, and most the the average stop for most retail traders is six to twelve ticks on the at the Nasdaq, six to twelve ticks on the S and P, uh, twelve to twenty ticks on the Russell, and gold is typically uh, twelve to twenty. Although I've seen more people on gold and crude oil stretch that, kind of widen those stops out recently. I've seen two different methods. Some people really tighten them up really tight. And which is almost a death by a death sentence with a death by a thousand cuts because 
crude and gold are so volatile. And I've seen other people going really wide because their stops are getting hit a lot. So one of the ways, gang, to try to, um, uh, you know, uh, avoid some of that would be, if nothing else, wait for a pullback. If you have a conviction that this is going to go ahead and uh, you know start to tra charge back up, then at least wait for the pullback so you're taking less heat. Do you, does that make sense as, as like a small lot trader? So what I'm trying to get, instead of buying the breakout, if you're a large lot trader, you can afford to go ahead and uh, typically you can afford to go in early and stay longer if you're a large lot trader. Okay. If you're going ahead and a small lot trader, do you really honestly want to sit through this heat? Do you want to sit through all that heat watching this slow bleed of death back against you? You jump in long, and now you're watching every five minutes go by. It's going against you. It's going against you. It's going against you. Does anybody here really want to sit through that? I suspect not. I've done uh, numerous uh, surveys on this, and I find that a lot of traders, especially ones that have suffered a, a number of losses, um, have gone ahead after four or five ticks against them, they get skittish, which would make sense because six to 12 ticks being their stop out point on things like the S&P, right? Okay. Hey, Mike, if you want to go ahead and, um, you know, do that um, newsletter thing that I just showed a few minutes ago. Uh, it actually includes uh, the speed lines as part of uh, the the monthly newsletter membership. So if you go there and you click it, you'll see it right down here. Um, it includes not only the monthly Q and A webinars, the discussion forum, the swing trading day trading video, and the fear of pulling the trigger, but it also includes that starter set of indicators, which has the speed lines and all you know those things uh, with speed lines and different uh, values and all the support moving support resistance levels on it. Okay, so um, hopefully that helps. And um, do you ever look at time and sales data? Not so much. Um, I really don't. Um, the uh, what I end up focusing much more on is what's actually happening on the charts. Um, there, you know, there's a host of reasons I could give you for that. Uh, to make a long story short, the answer is no. Um, I also, but what I do do is I look for manipulation on the platforms. Uh, for instance, like what will happen is we'll see a whole bunch of values. I didn't freeze it properly, but right now you can look on uh, crude oil. You'll see like a whole bunch of values here. What I'll start looking for sometimes is like super large values, like just above the price or just below the price, making it look like there's a whole bunch of buying or a whole bunch of selling um, in the backdrop there. Okay, uh, And so a lot of times what happens is that's somebody trying to go and paint the tape basically um, and, and make, the, make it look like, hey, boy, you don't really want to go ahead and go long here, do you? Or short because there's, you know, long because there's a whole bunch of sellers up here, or short because there's a whole bunch of buyers here. And then all of a sudden you'll see that big order just magically disappear and the market will start to tank through there. So I do kind of look for some of those signs occasionally of, you know, manipulated uh, uh, domes. But as far as the uh, tape itself, no, uh, I don't typically look at that. Okay. Uh, what platform does it work on? Uh, Cheryl, are you referring to my indicators? The starter package of indicators we actually make available to all the different platforms. Uh, we have plugins for several of the main ones: Toss, um, uh, you know, Trade Station, E Signal, um, you know, the Infinity AT charts, also known as uh, Sierra charts. Um, so there's there's several of the main platforms that we actually have a, like a plugin for. But we have the settings available for um, all the people that maybe have like tertiary. Uh, more custom or foreign, if you will, uh, charting packages. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at the bond market, David. Uh, we never made our way down there, and I apologize. Um, but let's kind of work our way down here real quick. The um, so with the NAS, uh, with the the yen, what I'm looking to do here with the yen is get down below 101. Okay. 
So we went ahead and originally hit my target up here. We couldn't break through that level uh, to move to higher levels. So we, we hit that resistance uh, that you guys know I was looking for in the nightly videos, and then we just pulled back, and now we're, we're kind of rolling over from that area. So if we get down below the 101 area, we have the opportunity for much lower prices. So that's something I'm looking for with the yen here. Um, as far as the British pound, I'm going to back off on the British pound uh, until such time as we get back above these highs. What I'm looking for is since we've had this push up, now we've had this pullback, um, you know, near this you know, very important uh, two-tiered uh, resistance level, we're pulling back into support. And I'm waiting for the pound to get back above this level right here, um, you know, this previous recent high. Let's just call it uh, $1.5720. It's uh, actually uh, $1.5716. But really, I'd like to get it above what I refer to as my 80-20 rule anyways when I'm breaking above a round number resistance of like $1.57. So I'd actually like to get it above dollar fifty seven twenty at that time then I'd be looking for gravity or like a tractor beam if you will to pull it up towards that all important dollar sixty level a dollar sixty level has been very important for years if you go ahead and and just take a look here. You'll see that blue line there. That's the dollar sixty. You'll just notice for a very long time, for you know, month after month, how we see all this uh, activity right along that dollar sixty level. Can you guys see that? Okay, it's very important because that's one of the ways I determine my key support and resistance levels uh, out into time for years to come. And then years later, they're still on my charts. That's why I use the continuous charts. If you notice, I don't use front month charts. I use continuous charts because I keep the support and resistance levels out there for years to come. Okay. So as we flash forward now, the expectation is if we can go ahead and get back above this area, I'm going to start looking for pushes, especially when we get above this recent uh, this distribution bar right back here, which is in the approximate vicinity there. So if we can get above that, I'm looking for then a, a, a move to kind of suck it back to $1.60. Uh, all right. Now, uh, for David, let's go ahead and get over to the... Um, that's correct, Manny. Yes. Uh, when we sign up, and I said you get all three bonuses. Uh, yes, that was the day and swing trading class. Uh, the um, fear of pulling a trigger, handling a drawdown, and the um, starter package of indicators. That's correct. The reason I do that is because the day trading video is very explicit. Um, I mean, basically talk about what we did in the trading room that day. Uh, really important. Uh, the, the, basically, you can become a heck of a lot better trader, in my humble opinion, um, if you just go ahead and watch that video each day because you we're talking about the, the daily, what we did, how we did it, why we did it, what you had to watch out for, what the concerns were, what the problems were, what the, uh, uh, the tools and techniques of the day that we use. So it's a great way, just watching a couple months' worth of those videos, to go ahead and get a whole great access to you know my understanding of the market. Then the swing trading video is really important um, as well because of the fact that we go ahead and um, uh, there we're, we're using your viewer requests. Uh, if you if you go look on the, the front page of the website, you go you got this discussion forum. So you go ahead and people ask you know about all the, these different markets, okay, and ask us to look at different things. And then if you look down in the videos down below, so this is the premium day trade when you can see some of the titles there but swing trade you see like the different instruments Amazon Apple uh, network appliance you know uh, just you look down through the list you see all the different instruments we're reviewing each day so to help you then understand some of the process of how and why we do that um, to give you kind of a crash course on that you get that swing trading video um, to help with that process and expedite things then of course the starter package of indicators allows you access to things like the speed lines and that um, so to instead of have to try to approximate uh, approximate some of my uh, methodologies, you'll have the actual settings. Does that make sense? So getting back to this, um, the uh, well, you never Pablo, you never t totally will know uh, when a pullback is over. What you can do is try to find the uh, the the most number of uh, confluence of support or resistance levels in a specific area, and that's one of the reasons why the speed lines are also very important. Because what you can do is have stops very tight behind the speed line. So, for instance, let's just take the bond here for a minute. We've pushed up. We pull back to the speed lines. Okay, if you take a speed line continuation trade, I've got a whole I've got a whole methodology behind this, and I think I already gave you guys all the opportunity to join me on Monday. Uh, if you go to the front page of the website here, 
and just put your first name and your email address, you'll get the information. It's going out at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, the, for the ability that you guys come to an actual class on this um, on Monday uh, for free. So the so but going back to that concept is you don't necessarily know now what you could do is you can assume using what I call skipping rock theory which is basically just um, picture when we were kids when you'd go ahead and you'd skip a rock on the water okay Every, you know and it just get uh, lower and lower and lower till it eventually sink okay so in other words it's hitting the key support hitting the key support hitting the key support and eventually it breaks through it eats away through it so same kind of concept here you know th there's different strategies you can put in place where it's like okay I'll take the first two bounces off the speed line or the first three bounces or the first four bounces but then I'm gonna go ahead and back off and what happens is then you have a stop back behind the speed lines okay and so you're taking the, the trade you're taking the trade and then you go ahead and take a stop on the last one uh, that goes ahead and comes through. Okay. Now there's different types of warning signals that we can give you uh, to help you here. Like for instance, the uh, uh, this indicator down here, which is also part of the stochast or the um, um, uh, starter package of indicators. So the um, here you see like the negative divergence. That so there's ways to help you identify where areas are likely to fail as well. So we're going to go through all that on Monday at that class. Um, so love to have each and every one of you there to uh, you know take you to a new level of learning there as well. Um, and um, so but getting back to the bond here in the big picture now for all of you that have been following my nightly video newsletter you know we actually back here on this day we went ahead and said as far as I'm concerned day traders should be out of this market on this, and then what I said on that same day is that the, as soon as we go ahead and close down below the speed lines um, this the, the, the swing traders should be out of this market from my perspective now we're all in charge of our own accounts we're all you know responsible for our own trading everybody has to consult their risk trading plans but this was my thought on the bonds okay and it's documented back there uh, you know for you guys to go back and watch in the videos and we discussed it in the live trading room and if anybody remembers those discussions you're welcome to go and post it in here um, but that's what we said we said on this day right back here uh, day trader should be done. This was like an FOMC meeting, and then what I said was, look, sometimes within uh, pivotal FOMC meetings, within a couple of days, we go ahead and we can get trend shifts, especially in a situation like this where we've been going up for a while. So here we got the close down below, so that's like ding dong, the witch is dead. Uh, no further opportunities here, for, uh, you know, from my perspective, for even the swing trading basis, and so you know, and sure enough, that ended up actually being the top of this. So what's happening here is we keep hitting uh, my key support levels if you look on the way down these were all here by the way uh, beforehand in fact I can even show you where the next one is uh, for those of you that are bond traders but we just hit this one and those of you that watch my nightly videos and are in the live stream these video these levels have been out here for a very long time we came down to that level basically to the tick uh, this morning uh, and are holding on to it but you'll notice that these different levels when we're, we're coming down here where we hit this it bounced bounces back and it goes back to what was support that then became resistance and then uh, bounces off it. Let me draw that for you. So it bounces off my support level, goes back to the resistance, then comes back to the support finally breaks through the support, hits the next target. Now that particular one it actually just it, it initially bounced off it and then it came right through it. But then it came down through, hit my next target, bounced back to that support level. Okay. Then it came down, then it's been holding here, and you see that my longer-term resistance has been coming down this on a, like a ton of bricks. In fact, uh, we had a real, for you bond traders, we had a really great discussion on this recently, which was the, uh, you know, what I was looking for was short-term long side trades between the bottom end of the channel and the midpoint of the channel. Then the midpoint of the channel is going to look for another short-term intraday only long side trade. But I said I would not want to look for, and, I, and this goes for everybody even now, I would not want to look for actual longer term position swing trades on this until such time as we're above all this gobbledygook right here. Because as you can see, on the way down, we continue to hit those different levels and just pull away from them. Basically what we're doing is, does everybody remember the class I did the other night on speed line to 20 period moving average trades? Did anybody see that class the other night? So it was the speed line to 20 class. I showed you how we do that with options and uh, trades. You remember that? So, so for all of you that were there for that, you recall, you know, you see the speed line to 20 MA trades here over and over again. 
um, you know, back and forth here. So we didn't talk about the bond one that night because we were talking about how we use it with the actual live options trades. But you see it over and over again. So right now, the first course of action for bond traders, I'm looking for another speed line to 20 trade. Again, you see it over and over back over here. Can everybody see that? Okay, it's speed line to 20 trade, and um, that, that's the first thing I'm looking for. So that would just be for day trading purposes, okay? And then I'm going ahead, and for the swing and position trading purposes, I'm really looking to get back above these areas, okay? So push through them, pull back, and then start to go ahead and take off again. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm looking for. So um, whoever it was, Dave, Dave T, I think it was, whoever it was back uh, a, a little while ago that asked about that. Um, so in the meantime, let's go back to the levels that we're at right now um, and go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So right now, look at how literally to the tick we hit my next support level. Would everybody like to know what my next key level is to the downside? For those of you that are bond traders, it's right down here. Okay, at the 125.22 area. Okay, so basically two things. Number one, then, uh, especially with this Doji star. What is a Doji star? A Doji star is basically just a period of indecision, right? That's all it is. So um, what I'd like to see then with this is either a breakdown through this accumulation. In a Doji star, then, basically, is an accumulation and a distribution bar. So let's go ahead and look at that a little bit tighter. Okay, for the bonds. So what I'd like to see here is to go ahead and go short, I'd like to see a breakdown below the current level here, today's low, all right? And uh, that's also an accumulation bar, so it'd be kind of a, like a double breakdown there. So a push down to it, a little retracement, and then starting to go back down would be fantastic. That would help me be more comfort comforted that we might continue to go down to my next target level. The the opposite side is true as well. We've now got this distribution bar on the top side of this as it stands right now. Of course, the market hasn't closed, but it's it's up there right now. Um, and so we have this distribution bar, which also happens to tie very nicely with the speed lines. So I'd like to get a break above that for some short-term intraday trading back to, so the speed line to 20 trade. Okay. So that's uh, kind of what I'm looking at next. So we've got uh, both a long and a short side strategy available um, for the uh, bonds. So for those of you that were asking questions about the bonds, does that give you a little bit better insight there? Yeah, a, a distribution bar, boy, I can go on. Uh, that one, um, there's just not, uh, I apologize, Dick. I like. Uh, I literally, you know, I, tra I travel all over the country um, for, you know, different uh, uh, great financial firms and, and uh, charting firms like TradeStation, for instance, teaching that concept. Maybe what I can do on the, during that Monday class is try to sneak in a little of that for you. Um, so, you know, but uh, we, I definitely like to spend some time on that because the, the, um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, it's, it's a simple price pattern. It's, it's stuff that uh, all of you can do on your um, charting platforms with your exact charting platforms you have now. Um, but the, um, you know, so if you want to do this, uh, just go ahead and uh, join us here uh, for Monday, and uh, I'll try to make a little point. Just remind me on Monday, I'll try to give you a little bit of a presentation, because that will be my presentation. We're supposed to end here momentarily, um, and uh, I want to be able to do it justice, because I, I, this, this is physically impossible to give you a really good um, uh, you know, uh, course on that in five minutes. It's just not possible. So we're going to go ahead and give all of you the chance to join us on Monday for free for a couple hour class. Uh, that's going to be some very real world practical uh, uh, setups and strategies that I think that you guys are going to really appreciate. And again, that special offer, if you wanted to join us today, it looks like some of you were already looking at that offer earlier is right here. Um, you know, uh, we just made an incredible offer for you to go ahead and uh, be part of our student family here uh, with the day trading uh, and swing trading videos. If you really want to become a better trader and learn more about real-world trading, those videos are for you. You can it, just watch the last month's worth of videos. They're, they're all available for you. Every one of them is available. You can go back as far back as you want um, to look at all of our old ones. Um, but just even watching the last 30 days will make you so much better of a trader. You'll see so many things you weren't aware of because those are the, the same things that we're using in our live trading each day. So I uh, click that little button uh, right there.
Okay. Uh, but like I said, I'll try to take care of you on Monday with the distribution uh, uh, accumulation uh, breakout. Okay. So, uh, yeah, actually the DAX, um, as far as the DAX, it's funny you mentioned that because um, if you look, uh, you know, I did that international trading competition in uh, France and um, uh, great, uh, awesome, Donna, very nice of you. Um, so uh, Har Harinder, if you look, this was the international trading competition last year in France and that's me sitting right there. So, you know, and this was a pretty intensive competition. And, uh, and by the way, th here's my actual chart. See, I told you guys this was a snapshot from that event. You'll see here um, that, uh, you, know, I, you know, these are the same charts that we were using. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, it's not there. So I don't have that available. But basically what you'll see is there was a, a, a decent sum. I want to say it was around $1,200, $1,500 or so of the uh, uh, trading that I did uh, that day was based on, oh, here it is, okay. So if you look at this, um, so that competition, let's just pull this up for you real quick. So there's competition. If you look here, that was the final the final round. I had four judges. You know, this is I take you know part of very real world, very serious competitions. Look at this, four different judges. I had four judges staring at me, <laughs> and I'm going ahead and answering on the microphone here, uh, taking questions from the audience while trying to go ahead and win the competition at the end. But right here, you'll notice, so here it is, $1,562.50 of that profit. Now, again, that's before taxes, before commissions, you know, um, before regulatory exchange fees um, and that. Um, that was in the DAX. So that I um, of the three thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars fifty cents I made that day before taxes, commissions, and again there's risk in trading, not just reward, gang. But of that roughly thirty-nine hundred ninety-two dollars, uh, well over a third of it, or about a third of it, approximately there, um, you know, fifteen hundred sixty-two dollars fifty cents of that um, is in the DAX. So yes, I do go ahead, and uh, these strategies um, are usable in the DAX as well. And again, I placed second in the international trading competition in May. Um, uh, you know, in forex as well. So uh, pretty diverse uh, backdrop there. Okay, and. Um, the uh, what did I take at the trade the traded competition? Well, I uh, was trading gold, crude oil. That was a triple witching options expiration day, so the stock index futures were kind of wacky. So I traded gold, crude oil, and the DAX. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, gang, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, geez, it's uh, we got 45 seconds left. Uh, Morgan, um, and for all of you, thank you for being here with me uh, to the very end. Um, you know, I really appreciate that. Thanks for all the great comments. Uh, hope we gave you a great opportunity to go ahead and be part of our, you know, come to our free event on Monday. You can register for that right here um, and, uh, you know, see some more real world, uh, you know, trading strategies and opportunities. Um, go ahead and, uh, and then also you know, join us for the, uh, the newsletter offer uh, that we made for you um, as well here today. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to uh, uh, Morgan. Morgan, thank you very much for hosting an incredible event and uh, glad to be here and appreciate all the great questions you guys asked today. I uh, hope that helped a lot, give you guys some real-world trading insights. Take care, everyone.